Okay, so up to a harder concept, and you just need to persist with the explanation because at the end we comes up with a, a nice, ap a nice uh, little formula. But you just have to persist with me explaining it. So we're coming up to uh, a product of vectors, and we define it as a scalar product of vectors. Um, so uh, in defining the product between vectors, I need to give you a purpose for which products may be used. Um, again, uh, I, d I show it to you, but at the end it's nice and neat at the finish. Okay, so for instance, um, we might have a force uh, acting on a particle so that it gets dragged along a plane, AB. Okay, so the vector displacement uh, of the particle is denoted by S. So the particle is being dragged along this direction, a distance, and so that's going to be displacement, and the force is another vector acting on the particle. Um, so, again, just persist. So if the force is parallel to the particle, so if the force is going this way, then the force is acting in the direction of the displacement. Now, one of the things in science is the thing called work. So the work you do on something is, the work done by the force is force multiplied by displacement. And again, this is just an explanation on, on how the product is used, okay? So just persist, okay? So work done, now work is a scalar quantity. So the product of two vectors is going to be a scalar. Okay. Now, ooh, sorry, jumped up. <laughs> that's, no, that's okay. Now, if the force is perpendicular, so the particle's moving that way, but the force is going that way, then there's no way the particle can go in that direction because the force can't move the, p the particle, and so the work done is zero. But there's a general case where the force is acting at an angle, okay? So we use a little bit of trigonometry. So this is the effective force. Okay, so we're going to use some trigonometry. And we've got uh, cos theta equals the adjacent effective over F, the hypotenuse. And so the effective force will be the force multiplied by cos theta. And so basically, going back to that work definition again, we've got force times, okay, that's the effective force, times the displacement, displacement. And so basically, we've got this formula here when you've got an angle, okay? So the, mo the consideration of work done previously motivates a definition of a scalar product. So if I've got the product, now it's called a dot product, it's not called a multiplication product, it's called a dot product, and we don't use a multiplied sign. Okay, so basically um, we had work equals Fs cos theta, and so this generates a formula for the general case of two vectors. It's the size of A times the size of B multiplied by the angle between A and B, okay? And the answer to a dot product is a scalar, and this is what you have to know, okay? This is the important thing, and it gets used in a lot of different ways. So the dot product of two vectors is the size of A times the size of B times the angle between them, and it's a scalar answer, okay? So special cases for dot products um, that can be useful, okay? so. Again, persist. So if I've got parallel vectors, okay, now parallel could be in the same direction or the opposite direction, and we'll do it as two cases. Okay, so if they're in the same direction, then there's no angle in between them. And so we've got A dot B equals magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times cos theta. Now again, you aren't necessarily up to date with the trig, but cos of theta, cos of zero is one, and so we end up with uh, a dot B equals magnitude of A times magnitude of B. If I've got them going in the opposite direction, so if they're going in opposite direction, then the angle in between is 180 degrees. And so uh, A dot B is times cos 180, and so I end up with, um, if they're in the opposite direction, you just get um, negative of A and B. And why is this useful? Okay, so come across the next page. Okay, so if we've got the two vectors equal to each other, so that means they're going in the same direction, then A dot B, that B is going to be another A. And then by the definition, we've got A dot 
a times a times cos theta, which is a magnitude of a times magnitude of a times 1, which is the magnitude of a times the magnitude of a, which is the magnitude of a squared. So what this means is, if you've got i times i or j times j, that just equals 1, because these guys are unit vectors. Okay? Suppose I've got a unit i times a unit i, I'll get 1, or unit vector j times a unit vector j, I'll get 1. And that's the most important thing, so just remember that one. Okay, so now we've got perpendicular vectors. So one vector is A, one vector is B, acting at a 90 degree angle. And so the formula says take it by cos 90, but on trigonometry, cos of 90 equals 0. So that means that when they're perpendicular, you get 0. So what this means in means is if you've got an I times a J, you'll get 0. Okay, so we've got I times I equals 1, J times J equals 1, but now we've got I times J equals 0. So when they're the same, you get 1. When they're different, you get a 0. And that's the important thing to remember. And I think that's our last one. So I'll have either have an exercise or it'll be followed up in the next video. Thanks, bye.